Let's take a look at the very latest developments as far as Katajiva Island uh, are concerned. Uh, it's an island, as I mentioned, nobody has really heard about, other than in Tamil Nadu, where it remains an emotive issue. Is this a political issue or are there larger concerns at this stage on India's territorial integrity? Fifty years after the Indira Gandhi government in New Delhi ceded the 285-acre uninhabited Kachatibu Island on the Park Straits to Sri Lanka, an RTI response by the BJP's Tamil Nadu unit chief Anamalai, the party says, proves that the Congress government and its ally since 2004, the DMK, were complicit in ceding the island. While the political and diplomatic context was different then, and Sri Lanka argued a strong case, Kachatibu has been an emotive issue for Tamil Nadu's fishermen, and the DMK had maintained that it was a historic mistake to cede the island. It's a sensitive pressure point in a long and checkered history between the DMK and Congress, which have been strong allies against the BJP, comes as an embarrassment during the election campaign. Over the last few decades, the Sri Lankan Navy has killed nearly 500 Indian fishermen for straying into Lankan waters. Now, they even auction seized Indian boats, crippling their livelihood. The 1974 agreement between India and Sri Lanka gave Indian fishermen rights to fish around Kachatibu, to dry their nets there and to undertake pilgrimage to a Catholic shrine there. But another agreement two years later denied these privileges. The External Affairs Minister blamed the ceding of the island squarely on the position of the first Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru and then Indira Gandhi. This is an observation by the then Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru in May of 1961. He says, he writes, I attach no importance at all to this little island and I would have no hesitation in giving up our claim to it. For years, the demand to retrieve Kachatibu has been a key poll issue in Tamil Nadu. But it's a question if getting it back alone can change realities for fishermen. While solutions like even leasing of the island were suggested by Jai Lalita, it's an issue that's often found political spotlight in election season with no solution after. Six lakh Tamils who are suffering in Sri Lanka, they had to come to India as refugees and settled here. As a result of this settlement, they have lived in this country for the last 50 years. Their families are here. They enjoy freedom. The cessation of this Kachatibu is a historical wrong. We have always opposed it and we wanted Kachatibu to be retrieved. In the last 10 years, what has the BJP done? What are the steps taken by Mr. Jay Shankar, Mr. Narendra Modi? Both Congress and BJP are only interested to play vote bank politics in the name of Kachatibu. Why BJP is not able to give out a statement that, yes, we will retrieve Kachatibu? Why all of a sudden, after three years of taking charges, Tamil Nadu leader Annamalai got the enlightenment to talk about Kachatibu? And this man, Bridge Kandalwal, had unsuccessfully moved a plea in the court then. I filed this petition in 1974. No government has any business to reduce the territory of India. They can add, but they can't uh, dilute or diminish the territory of India. That was the whole idea. While both the Congress and the DMK have as much to explain as the BJP, politically, the Saffron Party is in troubled waters in Tamil Nadu without a major ally after the AIADMK snapped ties last year. But the big question, would raking up a 50-year-old issue help the BJP net seats in the Dravidian heartland where it has a negligible presence? In Chennai with Suresh, Sam Daniel, Find the TV.
Well, joining us now, Mohan Kumar Mangalam, working president of the Tamil Nadu Congress, Nalin Kohli of the BJP, Rohan Gunaratna, professor of security studies at Nanyang Technological University, has been tracking this uh, for a long time. Veena Sikri, former ambassador of India. S. Murli Dharan is a political analyst. Thank you all very much for being with us. Um, Mr. Kumar Mangalam, you know what the prime minister said, and I quote, the Congress and the DMK are family units. They only care that their own sons and daughters rise. They don't care for anyone else. Their callousness on Kachativa has harmed the interests of our poor fishermen uh, and fisherwomen in particular. How would you respond? Sir, could you please unmute yourself? Sir, sorry, yeah. sorry about Go that. Ahead. I just unmuted myself. I'd say first I'd say that this is rhetoric that the Prime Minister has used many times over. It has no takers in Tamil Nadu. As your correspondent was saying in the introduction, the BJP find its, finds itself with no major ally in this election and is likely to end up being a distant third on all the seats that it's contesting. So the Prime Minister is desperately trying to find an emotive issue. Unfortunately for him, every issue that he tries to you know, bring to the fore, whether it was with the Sengal in the past or the Kashi Tamil Sangam, he's never been able to find enough takers in Tamil Nadu for his politics or his connect, which is why, you know, they contested 20 seats in the assembly and they won only four. They barely got four to five percent in the local body polls. And now they're going to end up third or even lower in some places in Tamil Nadu. So dragging through an issue which is 50 years old. The uh, foreign affairs minister, of course, uh, seems to have forgotten history himself because when he was foreign secretary and our party has put this out, there was an RTI response in 2015 when he categorically in the ministry where he was secretary, the statement was made that this did not involve either acquiring or ceding of territory belonging to India. This maritime border was a disputed border all the way from 1921 with Sri Lanka. And in 74, when this agreement was signed, it was signed keeping geopolitical considerations of those times in mind. They didn't, Mrs. Indira Gandhi did not want those waters to be no man's land or international waters where China, North Korea, where the Americans, the Russians could play uh, foul there. So there was a conscious decision taken at that point in time. And even when that decision was taken, there's yes. an article that was filed in 2013 that actually released the copy of that agreement where it said that subject to the foregoing Indian fishermen and pilgrims will enjoy access to visit Kachatheev and will not be required by Sri Lanka to obtain travel document or visas for these purposes. Now, the Sri Lankans interpreted that as being access to only rest, drying nets, or visit the Catholic shrine. But after that, the agreement your correspondent mentioned in 1976 was only for exclusive economic zones. We're limiting fishing of both nations to their exclusive economic zones. And Kachatib actually rises at the edge of those economic zones. So once again, there was confusion in that time. Frankly, because Sri Lanka had a massive civil war from 80s all the way up to 2009, this really started to become an issue for fishermen around 2008, sure. 2009. And I'll just interrupt and you to get a quick response day, uh, on this from Nalin Kohli. Nalin, uh, he made, you know, multiple points reply to all of them. But one of the points that Mohan Kumar Mangala mentions is that an earlier RTI says, and I quote, this did not involve either acquiring or ceding of territory <coughs> belonging to India since the area in question has never been demarcated. It's, it, I, I'm trying to understand whether this contradicts what the foreign minister uh, said earlier today. Not at all. How does it contradict the foreign minister? I think the two issues need to be seen carefully and then you'll understand the full picture. That there was an issue of demarcation is a fact. And that the RTI says so is not incorrect. But that's the minuscule part of the entirety. The real issue is what was the government of India under Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru and then subsequently Mrs. Indira Gandhi, what was their attitude towards this? If there is a lack of demarcation, let me put it in a different way. If there is a dispute Mr. between Mr. Mohan Kumar Mangalam and me on say a piece of land, I mean one can, I can fight my land on being told on advice, legal advice that yes, Vishnu tells me it's good legal advice, go ahead, fight it, you stand a chance of winning over it. But what do I do? I just then hand it over to Mr. Mohan Kumar Mangalam. That is the crux of it. Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru was least bothered about it. This was an attitude of the government, whether it's Aksai Chin, Kachatibu, whether it's Cocoa Islands, anything. And it doesn't matter. Look at the Northeast. The Northeast was almost treated like an appendix of India. Why should we even bother 
the, and it was this kind of attitude that was made to use a Indian Air Force planes to bomb territory within India. The only time it's happened in the history of India under Mrs. Indira Gandhi. So let's come back to Kachatibu. You therefore, first there is legal advice and sound legal advice that our claim is better. That is discarded. Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru makes clear his government and his stand. I would not hesitate a minute. Then Mrs. Indira Gandhi enters into an agreement. So far, no problem. 1976, it affects fishing rights. It's not a piece of land. It's a land which is an island in the sea. That changes economic zones and that changes fishing rights. It is recorded fact that this was part of India or under Chennai or Madras at that time, right up to 1948. So why did you give it up? Now, having given it up, when 6,200 fishermen get arrested, 1,200 boats are seized. Is it not a big issue? And then you can't have the Congress party or the DMK turning around and say, what is government of India doing? The question is about political hypocrisy or lack of political knowledge on the true facts. And it is the duty of every government to put out the true and complete facts for the public to know. It's as simple as that, which is what Anna Malai ji did through the RTI, which is what External Affairs Minister Jay Shankar has done today morning in a press conference, and which is most importantly raised by the Prime Minister of India, that you can't trust a government or can't trust a party that was in government that did, was, had its attitude about Indian interests in this manner. That's the sum and substance of it. Mohan Kubara Bangla, briefly, would you like to respond to that? Of course I would. I mean, this is rich coming from a party whose Prime Minister said that not a single inch of land has been ceded to the Chinese, but both their own Ladakh MP as well as the superintendent of police of Ladakh in an official report said that we have lost control of patrolling points and thousands of square meters of land, square kilometers of land have been occupied by the Chinese. That's one. Second, it is petty for a party in government to declassify documents selectively. I would love for them to declassify all conversations around Kachatif. You know, Mr. Anna Malai filed uh, an RTI and got a response in five days, whereas people like us have to wait 30 days to get just a denial and then go for an appeal. This is clearly using the government declassifying documents that shouldn't be declassified on the international stage, everything for petty politics, just so they can try and win against NOTA in Tamil Nadu. That's all they're doing. In Bangladesh right now, we settled a border dispute with them and we gave them more land than we took back. The Congress did not say anything, supported it in Parliament because we support the government when it comes to matters of international disputes, but not this government. This government will do whatever it takes to take even slight political gains. Okay, one sec. Nalan, go ahead. Briefly put, let's leave all the adjectives aside, petty and all that. Let's come back to the substance. Mr. Mohan Kumar Mangalam would be well advised to remember an English phrase, don't uh, wish for something that you don't know what may happen if you get that wish true. He's saying, Marriage. let's put out everything around it. If that happens, perhaps the Congress may be found running for cover because most of the things that have happened have happened under Congress rule. The singular point is simple as this. Don't Please put, put it out, politics sir. on it. Either go ahead and tell the Tamil Nadu people that we convince you we did it in national interest. We gave it up despite what Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru said. We agreed in 1976 to restrict your rights. So if you're suffering in terms of 6,200 people being arrested, 1,200 boats being doing that, it is part of the treaty and we stand by it because we did it. But you Mr. can't Let turn me around, you. and which is what the no, no, DMK no. is trying to Hold do. On. Write letter after letter to the central government expecting that you'll get an answer when you know what the true picture is. Move so away from both you of you this. for a moment. Hang on, I've got other guests who've been waiting right. very patiently as well. I wanted to go across to Rohan Gunaratna uh, for a Sri Lankan perspective on this. Rohan, do you see this as uh, you know, uh, political parties doing politics in India weeks before the elections? Or do you believe that this is a profound issue of, of sovereignty, one which affects both countries? The Indian political parties are now using this as a football. And they must stop doing that because it will disrupt the good relationship between Sri Lanka and India. As every Indian knows, Sri Lanka suffered immensely because of the terrorist training camps that was in Tamil Nadu, 
and now the situation the relationship has improved so they must not raise this cachatiu issue uh, the some of the things that have been said it's a distortion of history there was a very brief period in the 17th century when cachatiu the indians had influence and control over cachatiu but for the longest period cachatiu has been a part of sri lanka ancient sri lanka so it is very important for the indian leaders when they make these statements they must study the history of cachatiu there is sufficient documentation in the archives on the indian side and on the sri lankan side and they must not be selective but i ask all indian leaders not to raise this as a political as a electoral issue because it will damage the good relationship between these two countries ambassador sikri is this uh, potentially something which affects ties with sri lanka well it is certainly a matter of great sensitivity in sri lanka as well but i would say that we must look at what is the real issue that has led to the dispute over kachatibu and that is the freedom of the indian fishermen from tamil nadu primarily and others their right to fish in the waters in that area and that is the problem that is causing this issue to come up in such a big way because uh, we do know that in recent uh, months and years the sri lankan navy has been uh, stopping a lot of indian fishermen arresting many of them and even indian fishermen's boats have been uh, impounded and even put up for auction so i think we have to first and foremost uh, be able to take up the rights of indian fishermen and make sure that the sri, sri lankan navy does not interfere with these rights as we know that the kachatibu island is on the edge of the uh, exclusive economic zone of both india and sri lanka so it will always remain a matter of some dispute so that is why it is up to the good relations between india and sri lanka to talk about this issue to talk about the rights of indian fishermen to make sure that the indian that the sri lankan navy does not uh, affect these rights and arrest the indian fishermen and this agreement is what we need to have uh, between india and sri lanka this is what is causing all the dispute in tamil nadu and the dispute is coming about out because uh, tamil nadu government is now trying to blame uh, the present government at the center without realizing that it is the congress government earlier that had given away uh, the kachatibu island in 1974 and the remarks made by leaders at that time about the lack of importance of this island uh, uh, does not take away in any way from the sovereignty that uh, india indian uh, the indian government the british indian government was exercising over this island through the raja of ramnad he had been given the in their rights by the british indian government and so that issue is one aspect but the other issue about the rights of uh, indian uh, fishermen yes. is something which of day to day importance and has to be taken on board you cannot just say it's an unimportant island just like in aksai chin not a single blade of grass grows but that doesn't matter it's still indian territory so this aspect is one the second is the rights of indian fishermen both have to be looked at sure. uh, very uh, mr murli daran um Uh, is there a a sense that the dmk really needs to look at it from the prism of uh, of fishermen uh, that that is something that is not being done enough and therefore that's a point which uh, you know that the bjp makes that look if you truly care about people in tamil nadu then the fisher folk community is absolutely critical uh, and how can you not look at this entire issue from their prism how can you be a partner to a a party which is given this land away that's the allegation which has been made so oh, that happened in 1974 at that point of time vishnu even sarnamale was not born the rti expert and secondly and if this is a non issue in tamil nadu and uh, it's uh, arnamale's arrogance which has severe ties with admk and the uh, prime minister has realized that they're not going to win even one seat in tamil nadu that's what is boiling down to and let me tell you today morning i think uh, uh, today morning or yesterday Uh, china renamed some 30 locations arunachal pradesh in uh, tibetan whatever languages and uh, the sri lanka is building another deep sea port apart from ambandota and it's also building a airport uh, which is done by china and do they have an answer for all that 
Yes, let's say, okay, Ms. Indira Gandhi made a mistake. Mr. Karnanidhi made a mistake. It's 1984. And whose job is it to correct? And what, what were they doing last 10 years? Isn't, isn't that important? I mean, see, I will tell you one more ad. See, this is, this is, this is they're trying to rake up some issue, which is a non-issue just for electoral gates. Whereas Mr. Mohan said, they're not even going to be in third or probably going to be in the fourth place. And apart from that, this island is a Catholic island. So I can understand what's BJP, what's irking BJP. And it's, you know, the advisors of the Prime Minister Modi sitting in Tamil Nadu who are talking about the communal idea. This is a Catholic island. This needs to be taken over by need. I mean, that's absurd. Okay, that's a strong allegation. Country. Nalin Kohli, would you like to respond to that? That there is a communal agenda which is being spun. Okay, I don't normally go by strong words because I've always believed adjectives and strong words are to cover up for content. When you have content, the content speaks for itself. You don't need to add so many adjectives, adverbs, etc. So coming back to the core issue, it's not a non-issue. Mm -hmm. That's the first point. If it was a non-issue, it wouldn't be an issue raised by political parties of Tamil Nadu. There wouldn't be so many dozens of correspondences between the state government and the central government, which includes the current government of Tamil Nadu. It's not very complicated, therefore. If it's an important issue, if it matters to the people of Tamil Nadu, particularly the fishermen community, then certainly they are entitled to know the entire facts. If they are entitled to know the entire facts, it can't be a simple lobby, let's blame the centre. Then we have to blame the centre which took the decision and everybody has to stand by it. Now, essentially, the Congress and the DMK are on the same side. So, basically, it's one left foot or one left shoe being forced onto both the feet. So, the DMK now has an issue that the decision actually was taken by the Congress government. What the Congress said was certainly not evidently in, uh, in favour of the fishermen community of Tamil Nadu, but they are standing together. So, therefore, you then start abusing the BJP. So, let's stop abusing the BJP and understand what the problem is and then... You have a solution. Go and explain it to the people. But by abusing the Honorable Prime Minister, that's not going to change the facts of the case. And Nalin, one final question to you. This is what uh, the Congress was saying uh, earlier on, uh, Mr. Mohan Kumar Amanglam. And this is what Balikarjun Kharge has also said. When, when China resorts to provocation, the Prime Minister attempts to seek refuge by a false narrative on Kacha Thiva. Uh, uh, how would you respond to that? Who is the Congress party to arrive at the point and say it's a false narrative? On the China issue, the Congress party, every time it points a single finger to the BJP, ends up pointing three fingers to itself. I mean, the MOU between the Chinese Communist Party and, the, uh, in, and an Indian party is actually the Congress party. Rahul Gandhi ji, Sonia Gandhi ji. It was Rahul Gandhi who chose to meet quietly, with surreptitiously, the Chinese ambassador when Doklam was happening. So, I mean, what is the Congress party building all this? Aksai so, Chin, Mo Mohan Kumar the Amangala greatest Nalin, Nalin in terms makes of handing point. over territory in as to much uh, as China Nalin, was about second. one blade of grass doesn't grow. No, I, uh, you, you, you make an important point. And, and Mohan Kumar Amangalam, isn't it, is it accurate for the Congress party is, is that to be pointing fingers point on, the, on the BJP on territorial integrity when the Vishnu entire is. state of the line of actual control, the fact that there has been virtually zero infrastructure build up a few years back is entirely because of the Congress not having done enough. That's a fact. No advanced landing sites. Vishnu, Vishnu, you are actually no taking roads. what he is saying when we are about... Sentence. Oh, half Vishnu, a second, why don't you go, on, go ahead. Yeah. A bit and then I'll call. I applaud the infrastructure build-up, but if you say that there was no infrastructure build-up that happened before that, I'm sure I can find data to uh, dissuade no, no, you from minimal, that. Opinion, minimal infrastructure build-up. And I can, yeah, I, 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 I can talk about Mr. roads Nalan and highways in lawyer, Ladakh and in Arunachal Pradesh, which have just I recently been built-up. I want to the MOU that so, was secretly signed by Mr. Gandhi with the CCCB. I mean, there are stories of Ram Madhav and the RSS also going and signing agreements. You know, these are childish allegations. I'm really surprised to hear Mr. Kohli, who's such a learned lawyer, bring these up in this sort of these sort of arguments. The issue really is when it comes to Kachatif, is that what did the government do in the last 10 years if they believe that this was a historic wrong that has happened? What did they do to try and correct it? You had Sri Lanka in a position where we just gave them a dollars in extended credit line. We are bending over backwards to make sure the Chinese don't take over all infrastructure there. What did you do? Did you bring Kachatib into the conversation at all? 
this was one point in time where you could have actually done something but no had you done something and solved the problem you couldn't then pick it up and okay. use it in your all right mon i'm interrupting because right i now. need to give nalin 30 seconds to respond and then we we'll wrap this up otherwise we'll keep talking for an hour go ahead nalin 30 seconds please sure <laughs> it's okay mon ji thank you for those kind words about me being a erudite lawyer etc <laughs> but that's not a childish argument that i'm putting forth i'm simply putting forth an argument let the people who are watching ndtv decide but to close it in one sentence if you believe that it was a great decision of pandit jawaharlal nehru and indira gandhi ji say so if you believe it's a historical blunder say so then after that you will have some right to tell the bjp government in the center that now what you want to do first take your stand whether you are with what was done is correct or whether you disagree with what was done at that time that's the starting point all right look i'd like to thank you all very much for joining us this has become an election issue one way or the other the sri lankans are concerned that this might actually impact relations between two incredibly friendly nations and that would be very very tragic if that were to take place but i'd like to thank you all and ambassador sikri very much for being with us next up on the show Arvind Kejriwal the Delhi chief minister is now in Tihar jail he'll spend the next 2 weeks there in connection with the liquor policy case now the opposition says Mr Kejriwal is being harassed as part of an effort to shut down the opposition the enforcement directorate says that he is the kingpin of the alleged scam and the aam aadmi party says that he'll continue to be Delhi's chief minister even while he is behind bars is that practical does that work joining us to look at that um we joined uh, by Manjinder Singh Sirsa spokesperson uh, of the BJP I'm joined by uh, Abhinandita Mathur of the Aam Aadmi Party and Aarti Jairath uh, Abhinandita uh, is that uh, a practical sort of way forward that he will continue to be chief minister even when he's in jail uh, what about the fact that this is one of the largest cities in the world it needs real governance and a chief minister who's not behind bars uh, Vishnu there is one thing that right at the beginning i should say that you know there is one aspect of it is all the legal aspect and administrative aspect the other is it is happening in a political context which we should keep in mind in the course of this uh, conversation you know it is unfortunate that we don't ask this questions of incompetent sitting chief ministers uh, even outside for example the uh, the biren singh the chief minister of manipur manipur has been burning for the last one year and nobody has asked for his resignation bjp has not uh, you know uh, dissuaded him from keep being on the chair or replaced him or anything so you know there is here there is a very competent chief minister who has done incredible work has done path breaking work if i may say so and uh, he has to be with on pure allegations without any evidence without conviction has been put behind bars what i'm trying to say is that this is an extraordinary scenario that the bjp has put this country in it is in an undeclared emergency and it's a blatant shameless sort of parade of bjp's power and might um, whether or not Mr Kejriwal will govern well there is no law that stops him and the and they did go to courts and the court uh, you know uh, did crush that argument so let's see what happens what i can assure the people of delhi is that you know despite all the problems all the hindrances that the central government has been putting on the chief minister of delhi uh, the people of delhi have in you know have entrusted him have put in the faith he's not let them down which is how we you know keep getting this big mandate in delhi i think that uh, he will do what the people uh, what the will of the people is and okay. when we had gone to when we had gone door to door um uh, because we saw this coming a couple of months ago we had a unanimous you know yes we want only arvind kejriwal okay and i get it so he will remain in power uh, because that you say is what people want uh, manjinder singh sirsa reply to that there is no evidence which the aam aadmi party says has been found against him he has not been convicted he's been questioned presently therefore he has every right to remain chief minister that's their argument how would you reply so in last 75 years there is not a single instance where you feel that some chief minister or even a minister is behind the bars in a jail and he says ki nahi main to mukhya mantri hi rahunga so for the sake of argument let's presume tomorrow any state dgp is involved in any kind of a crime and the case is registered against him he is put behind the bar 
एंड ई सेस की मैं तो डीजीपी पुलिस हूँ मैं तो पढ़ लिख कर आई बनकर आया हूँ कहाँ लिखा है कानून में मैं तो डी जी जेल से चलाऊँगा न द सेकेंड थिंग इज द सेट की कोई कन्विक्शन नहीं हुई अदर एवरी अदर पर्सन हु एज रिजाइन फ्रॉम द पोस्ट मेड बी आ लेट जयललिता जी मेड बी आ करंट चीफ मिनिस्टर सुरेन जी मेड बी आ लालू प्रसाद यादव जी मेड बी आ उमा भारती जी हुज जस्ट समन बाय द कोर्ट देर इज नॉट अ सिंगल इंस्टांस विच सेज देर इज अ मॉरल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी टूवर्ड्स द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन टूवर्ड्स द पीपल ऑफ द कंट्री नाउ द लेट द स्पोक्स पर्सन सेज कि जिनको तो लोगों ने मैंडेट दिया है डू यू थिंक लालू प्रसाद यादव बिकेम चीफ मिनिस्टर विदाउट मैंडेट सो पब्लिक एज नॉट गिव इन मैंडेट बट ही बिकेम चीफ मिनिस्टर जयलिता जी बिकेम चीफ मिनिस्टर विदाउट मैंडेट सो पीपल एज नॉट वोटेड फॉर जयलिता जी बट सम हाउस शी बिकेम चीफ मिनिस्टर एंड वॉट वॉट द सुरेन हेमंत सुरेन जी सो इज द चीफ मिनिस्टर विदाउट मैंडेट एवरी मिनिस्टर एम एल ए मेंबर पार्लियामेंट चीफ मिनिस्टर यूनियन मिनिस्टर ओनली बिकम्स comes to the post when is mandated by the people right now the question is lalu ji also came to the power with the people mandate but when he was involved in corruption he was put behind bars he first resigned wake away for her wife rabdi ji and she became the chief minister now for the sake of reason now this is a all moral duties but now i talk about the constitutional duty yeah one must always understand while arvind kejriwal ji is in jail neither he can sign any document neither he can call for any meeting neither he can pass any order and in case supposingly tomorrow he want to write a simple letter not a order just a simple letter that letter also has to be read by the jailer then only this letter can be passed on to the any other person so here he has taken a oath also and oath for secrecy also so it is totally impossible that chief minister can run a okay so it's not practical from jail. for okay and now she's where it is written sure, she, i Vishnu, get that Vishnu, point 30 seconds 30 seconds if you allow me बस थर्टी सेकंड छोड़ो गो हेड नॉल द लेडी सेज कि कहां लिखा हुआ है क्यों नहीं लिखा हुआ बिकॉज नो बडी इन इज वाइल्डस्ट ड्रीम्ड हैव एवर थॉट कि देयर वुड बी सम पर्सन हु विल बी सिटिंग ऑन अ चीफ मिनिस्टर चेयर एंड गोइंग टू जेल एंड फिर सेइंग कि मैं तो चीफ मिनिस्टर हूं जी मेरे को तो मंजिंदर जी आई आई गेट द पॉइंट यू आर मेकिंग आई वांट टू गो क्रॉस टू आरती एंड अभिनंदन आई विल गिव यू अ राइट टू रिप्लाई आफ्टर दैट आई थिंक आरती द लार्जर क्वेश्चन व्हिच पीपल आर आस्किंग इज Uh, with uh, kejriwal presently in tihar jail um, it, not just the issue of governance what about the immediate future of the ahmadmi party uh, uh, there are elections around the corner some suggest that there may be a way for kejriwal others suggest that if this doesn't go well for arvind kejriwal the future of the ahmadmi party as a viable entity is something that certainly may be questioned how do you see this going for them Well, I think Vishnu, you know, these questions will be answered, uh, you know, as the weeks unfold. Uh, you know, I, and there, there are various issues involved here. Firstly, whether Arvind Kejriwal should actually be in jail when, at the moment, he's only being questioned. Uh, you know, no charge sheet has been filed against him. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, he's he's simply being questioned. So why he should be put in behind bars? when he's been questioned is a mystery to me but anyway the court has decided in its wisdom that he should remain behind bars so i guess he remains behind bars secondly it is completely untenable for a government to run from jail uh, i think as mr sirsa pointed out there are certain constitutional requirements for governance and obviously those constitutional requirements cannot be fulfilled as long as somebody is in jail now why is arvind kejriwal sticking to the stand that he's going to run the government from jail I think it's a challenge to the center that dismiss me then dismiss me if you dare to dismiss me dismiss me and I think that is really what Arvind Kejriwal would like because that then helps him to you know do what he does best which is play the victim card and get public sympathy so you know rather than have to go through this thing of trying to choose a, dip, a, a replacement for himself from amongst his ministers or should he put his wife in you know and create all kinds of power struggles in his party i think the simplest option would be for him to just you know stick to his guns make it so difficult that ultimately they will have to declare president's rule and declare and disperse his government and then you know he can play his politics so you know it's a it's a perception battle vishnu it's a war of nerves between the modi government and hejriwal uh you know at a time when elections are uh, now reaching its in peak election season 
and uh, you know the question is whose narrative is going to sell better to the voter aam aadmi party's narrative that they are being that uh, you know kejriwal is being victimized that the opposition is being victimized uh, that agencies are being used against them or the government's narrative that you know these opposition parties are corrupt or arvind kejriwal who came to power on an anti graft uh, you know movement has proved to be as corrupt as the rest so you know it's it's this battle of narratives that is going on and uh, you know it has to be it will be decided in the people's court um and then you know not really in a court of law it's sure. the people's court abhi nandita then, how would you respond what to what arti is saying when she suggests that uh, kejriwal is uh, arvind kejriwal is playing a game where he is trying to get uh, into a situation where he's dismissed and that uh, you know suits the aam aadmi party politically in these elections Uh, how would you respond to that i agree with arti when she says that this is a game of nerves and bjp's bad luck is that this time they are actually encountering somebody like arvind kejriwal and that is also why they are especially very uh, uh, m- uh, well mean to him or go after him because they don't have a tod for arvind kejriwal as yet it is it's true that it is a game of nerves uh, not just between the aam aadmi party and arvind kejriwal with the bjp but i think for a lot of indians who see this country going down the drain in the current bjp regime what it means is that you know when they speak about corruption bjp speaks about corruption obviously they are not serious and the people are able to see it because if you look at the sharda chit scam um uh accused they are they are in the bjp you look at the water uh, scam accused in assam they are in the bjp they are the chief minister from a bjp government if you look at the main uh, you know accused of the so to speak liquor scam one of the main accused this shrirat reddy is now uh, you know gives 60 crore rupees to uh, bjp in electoral bonds and ed does not object to his bail uh The BJP did not realize until this point yeah, that, Nandita, that is the that the ED court, is being suggested. The Supreme Court will actually. Uh, right. well, what you are saying is that the ED is being selected. Reveal the data of electoral sure. bonds, and that is the turning point in this case. No, no, Abhi no, Nandita, I am only interrupting you. I Sorry. take the point that you are mentioning, where you are saying that the ED is being selective. You have given examples. The flip side of this is that the ED believes that the liquor policy in Delhi provided a, a, an impossibly high profit margin. nearly 185% for retailers 12% for wholesalers part of these proceeds came to the aam aadmi party which funded your election campaign in goa right and that arvind kejriwal has not been responding he's been evasive when these questions have been put to him so you can raise other examples of corruption and look they've done nothing there but these are all very serious charges respond to these Well, these are charges, and like I said earlier, that these are only charges without any basis. If the BJP was that committed about, forget the corruption otherwise, but even if about this particular case, why would it accept? Uh, you know 60 crore rupees from a co-accused in this matter who then turns government approver. So these are all very questionable things. I do get what you're saying, but. one has to look at it like i said earlier beyond the legal aspect we have to look at it within a political context and the political context is that despite all the chappan in chati and 400 par and uh, so on modi modi ji is all right so there's a political the, context is what the aam aadmi party is saying manjinder singh sir sir reply to that go ahead sir yes sir so first of all i am totally in agreement with uh, ms mathur when she says कि उनका एक गलत आदमी से पाला पड़ गया विद अ रॉन्ग मैन हम बिल्कुल मानते हैं बिकॉज इन द थ्रॉट प्रोसेस इन लास्ट सेवेंटी फाइव ईयर यू मस्ट हैव नेवर सीन अ सिंगल पर्सन जो इतना करप्ट हो हु सेज कि मैं तो एक दो कमरे के मकान में रहूंगा टू डेज लिविंग इन हंड्रेड करोड़ रुपीज हाउस हु सेड मुझे तो सिक्योरिटी भी चाहिए नाउ ही वॉन्ट्स फॉर टू स्टेट सिक्योरिटी प्लीज प्लीज कम्प्लीट लेट मी कम्प्लीट माथुरू मिस माथुरू प्लीज लेट मी कम्प्लीट हाँ Abhinanda ji, please let me complete it. Okay. Now the third thing is very importantly, I must mention here. They said that there is no evidence. Uh, Arvind Kejriwal ji went to court, went to lower court. The court said you have to be summoned. They went to high court. The double bench, after seeing this evidence, put up a case for two uh, after after lunch. So then they decided that we cannot. After seeing the evidence, they said we cannot uh, give any kind of a relief. No coercive action. Stay cannot be granted. No bail cannot be granted. No arrest. Stay can't be granted. 
Arvind Kejriwal ji went to Supreme Court also, but then they withdraw the petition because K. Kavita petition was rejected at the same time. Sanjay Singh ji went to every court, uh, Manish Sodhya ji went to up to Supreme Court, but no, every court said that there is a sufficient evidence on record, in the proceeds of crime on record, and it's a very serious case, they can't be granted bail. Now they say that our class is not a good Now today, and today what happened in court? Now the person who is a middleman, Mr. Nair, Vijay Nair, who are in the KGV, has me I don't know who is. Minister, yesterday only his minister said that my official bangla was given to me Vijay Nair and Arvind Kejriwal Ji said that I was in Sant Kunj, I was not in that bangla. This statement is given by Mr. Gilot, none other than it is his minister, his party minister, he said that I was given to Vijay Nair's official bangla. Now who is a Vijay Nair to occupy that bangla? And today in the court, in the presence of Arvind Kejriwal Ji, the lawyer said, the ASG, Raju said, that he said that he didn't know anything about Vijay Nair, what he was doing, what he was doing, what he was doing. He was reporting to Atishi Ji and Bhardwaj Ji. And that is in the presence of Arvind Kejriwal Ji. So one thing is very clear. There are too many things to, on evidence to, on record to prove that Arvind Kejriwal is directly involved. And today when he was again sent to jail. So if there, from today onwards, see, Vishnu, one thing you must always remember from today onwards. So let it be last, for the last 10 days, Arvind Kejriwal Ji was in the custody with ED. Right. So we can say that Arvind Kejriwal Ji was illegally arrested. But today onwards, it has nothing to do with ED, it has nothing to do with any right. agency, any okay. government. Now it's a sole, right. so sole stop, purpose stop of the legal system that whether they feel that answered. these are accused or not. Right. I'd like to wrap this up at this stage. I'd like to thank you all very much for being with us. Arvind Kejriwal, Delhi Chief Minister, now in Tihar. The Aadmi Party says that this is part of a, a larger political conspiracy against him. Uh, the BJP insists that the charges are strong and that he must face justice. We'll take a short break. Come back. With you.